Hi there, and thanks for watching Cappuccino Conversations, where we celebrate Innovation Month. Um, the upcoming fifth South African Innovation Summit is happening in Bryanston at the end of this month, and we are talking to a lot of those speakers. One of them is uh, Ren Chafenta. Thanks for joining us from Deloitte. Welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to fall right in and, and ask you about your session. You're in the space of innovation. You're particularly looking at um, how companies can use business networks in order to cultivate innovation in, in internally, right? Yes, that's Do you want to talk a little true. about that? You've done some pretty interesting research. Yes, I can talk about that. Okay. Um, basically, what we looked at is we looked at the need for innovation in, um, in the new world of work and on a global level. Okay. Um, and we looked at why is innovation important? And there's basically four macroeconomic factors that you can look at that drive the need for organizations as well as countries to become more innovative okay. and, and on a global scale. Okay. So the first thing is that we live in a resource constrained world. Right. We've seen this recently, um, lots of conversations about um, uh, the scarcity of, of food, the scarcity of water, scarcity of fuel, right. all those okay. kind of things. Yeah. So we need to come up with new kind of solutions for these in problems resources. that, that, okay. that, that, that mm -hmm. we will face in the future. The second thing is the, the global shift on an economic scale of the emerging markets and the developed markets and who's in the power and who's in the pound seat. Right. Um, lots of new different things coming, coming in there, yeah. South Africa becoming part of BRICS. Um, so there's a lot of new opportunities mm. and for innovative companies to actually almost, I want to say, pounce on these opportunities right, to be able it, to realize... The commercial sort of climate has changed. Lots okay. of commercial okay. value to be okay. read from that, okay. yes. And then um, on the third level is that we increasingly live in a very interconnected world. Mm. Um, and it's not only interconnected, it's real-time interconnectivity. Okay. Um, and I think that is something like the, the Arab Spring is a very nice case in point right. of the impact of that kind of real-time interconnectivity. Mm. And all these things tie together to increasingly make the consumer a very important part of your business Central. model. That's so right. no longer can big business just push product and process right. at the consumer. The consumer becomes a central part of how you design your business. Because firstly, yeah. we have scarce resources, so not everything is available mm. to everyone. Secondly, after the global recession, people don't have money to spend just on anything. Though, so they are very discerning in terms of where they put their money and what right. they spend it on. And thirdly, in terms of if, if you look at this kind of interconnectivity, um, you know, if, if a new cell phone comes out, the first thing that happens is this it's thing is on Twitter, and, and then you Absolutely. say, I yeah. liked it, I didn't like that the screen layout was poor, um, the buttons were too mm. big or too small, that kind of thing. Yeah. So your marketing campaign is no longer enough. People um, have the ability to share there's, there's a lot more information. There's almost a sense of truth to something. Hey, marketing's yes, changed tremendously. Yes, yeah, yes, wonderful. absolutely. And yeah. this stuff is all going to be in your session? This stuff is all going to be in my session, but why this is important for us is to look at if we say organizations need this kind of innovation, where do we find innovation? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know that innovation is costly. Um, it's sometimes this big woolly thing. We don't know what we it is really or where to find it. it. Yeah. And, you know, how does it work? And will mm. it cost me so much money that I will never be able to implement mm. it? Mm. So we looked at um, this is research that I did through Gibbs and in collaboration mm. with the European Union, right. um, where we looked at the impact of business networks on innovation. So is there something in a business network, some value that we can read that from can this, right. that will okay. help us in an organizational okay. level to be more innovative? This is fantastic. Now I want to step back again okay. because I know that people are going to come to your session to find out what the truth yes. is here. Because then you said there's sort of different different areas where it might and might not work. Yes, absolutely. I want to step back into an innovation space. What what makes this beast so difficult to grasp, and what makes innovation be something that's so hard to get going in companies? I think innovation is is different for different people. Mm. It's a, it's a hard to grasp concept. Right. And it means different things for different people. Um, the way I see it, it's a combination of creativity as well as invention, as well as change. Yes. Um, yes. So creativity coming up with a new idea or a new way of looking at things. Mm. Invention mm. is then taking this idea and making it into something concrete and usable. Yes. Now this concrete thing can be a process or it can be a completely new product. Right. Okay. Um, now, and when we look at change, is how do we use this new process or this new product 
and implement it in an organization to make it work. For the betterment. Now, of That's course, right. we don't only want to improve the organization. We are all in business and we also want to make money and money equals sustainability. Yeah. So you also want to see how you can use this new product or no pro a new process to make your organization more profitable, exactly. okay. to make it more um, sustainable, to take it into the future, into the new millennium. And also, very importantly now with this interconnectedness on a global level, is how do you make yourself more competitive? Right. Right. And also now the, the, the next question is, I mean, if you, if you looked at a company, could you, could you see if a company was really innovative? I mean, can you sort of like suss it out and go, mm, there's innovation here or oof, this is not going to work? I think one needs to be careful of just looking at the, at the look and feel. There okay. is, of course, you know, there's, there's window dressing, obviously. There's window is, dressing. Where you're um, innovative. This yes, car is innovative. That exactly. Innovative. Okay. Just put okay. the bumper yeah, sticker on right. and then you're ready yeah. to go. Okay. Now, I think there are certain organizations with a certain level of energy and a drive mm. and you can mm. feel it when, when, when you walk in there. Um, however, alive, right? yes, it's absolutely alive. But mm. um, the thing, I, th I think the, 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 the crux of, of innovation is always can you implement it? Does right. it work? Yeah. Um, and a lot of time, I think, in especially in large organizations, what people do is they say, okay, now we need to go and innovate. Okay, boys, yeah. come, we all sit yeah. in a room, Let's do, and, and now we come up works, with this right? innovative new yeah. thing, mm. and now we try this thing, we implement and implement and implement, and four years later, we're still trying to be yeah. innovative. This thing didn't work, but we're but just scared to actually it. scrap yeah. it off. Is yeah. that still innovative? Yeah. No, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. So innovation is a very, I think it can be a very risky thing. Mm. Um, it can be a very resource intensive thing mm. and therefore people are scared to actually go down sure, that road. because it's not always tangible immediately or the, exactly. or, the, or the result of something may not immediately be tangible. And a right. business okay. network yeah. is exactly the catalyst that can help well, you, you can to get you. over that risk, to help you to mitigate your risks as well as to, to help you to use your resources effectively because by utilizing your business network you don't mm. need to use only your own resources, mm. you can also utilize the resources right, that's existing right. in the network. Now yeah. when it comes to networking, I mean, are people, it's becoming more and more of a trend for people to network a little mm -hmm. bit, but I mean, there's still some fears with that because it yes. does mean that we have to share. How do, you, how do you get people to get through that? Because sometimes you can be stuck with an idea and unless you actually share or connect with the right person, it's never gonna come to flourishing. Yes. How do you get people over that next little hurdle to, to share, to, open up a little, is it difficult? That's, that's a very interesting question that we looked at specifically in this research mm. and there's a, there's a market difference between um, emerging markets and developed markets um, where we right. see, we, we look at two different types of, of business networks. So we say the value of a business network is not necessarily in the size of the business network. Mm. Mm. It is in how you can connect to the nodes of a business network that you don't normally have access to. Okay. So okay. say for example, I um, know you very well. We've known each other for mm. 10 years. We've been friends forever. Um, that is what we would call a strong tie. Right. Um, then you get a weak tie where it's something like we went to school together, but I haven't seen you in 10 years. Right. And suddenly I bump into you in the mall and on a Saturday mm. morning. And I say to you, I'm actually in the job market. And you say, you wouldn't believe it, but I'm actually in a similar kind of right. industry yeah, and there connect. is a job available okay. for yeah. you. Mm. So in your strong ties, you often get the same kind of information. You know, we talk Makes about sense. the same things, we've mm. been friends for 10 years, mm. we have the same kind of conversations, mm. but your weak ties is often where you get that extra little spurt of information mm. or something that you didn't think about. Okay. So that's the first thing that we look at. The second thing that we, and that's also a trust relationship. Sure. Huh? Sure. The second thing that we look at is we look at um, informal versus formal ties. Okay. And that's the depth of the relationship. Right. So formal ties, when I have a contract with you, we have a joint venture, mm -hmm. and I said, okay, so now because we have this contract, we've signed the MOU, and I can now give you all my Share. secret okay. information yeah. and my blueprints. Mm -hmm. Whereas a, um, a, 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 an informal network is where we have a conversational base, we've worked together in the past, or we went and to school, or those kind of things, yes. 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 Right. What we found is that organizations that network within their own country mm. often work on informal ties. Okay. We know each trust, other, we know the sure. market, you know the market reputation, has a certain size, so reputation, yeah. right. you know, if there's problems with our relationship, mm. it's going to come out, I won't be able mm. to do business in the future. Yeah. Whereas it's a huge hurdle for organizations that want to move across into right. a different country. Right. I don't know the culture, I cannot speak the language, I don't know these people, I would prefer to have a contract. Yeah. Yeah. And now the interesting thing is how do innovation and information flow across these kind of channels? 
sure. because one would because think the style of communication changes completely. Yes, right? and one okay. would think that mm. with an informal network, mm. people would share more information. Mm. Whereas what we found with the specific research that we did is with the formal relationships, you get more information sharing I because see, people yeah. feel that they are safeguarded, Secure. they're trusted, you can share the information. Oh, yeah. yeah. Also, do you find in that space people are more susceptible to sharing because because the risk may be less. I mean, risk is also a big part of, of innovation, yes. isn't it? Yeah. yeah I think, it's almost I as think the two work against one another because yes. you have to take the risk to kind of do something new, Absolutely. but the risk of failure is uh, just... Yeah, yeah. I think in that in, in that space, you, you, you often also find that there's a, there's a very big advantage for smaller organizations to be affiliated with larger organizations yeah. on a global scale. Sure, sure. Because that, that kind of information sharing and information flow works very well mm. because mm. your small organization is far more agile, yeah. so they can implement things quicker. But your larger organization maybe has more funding available or a research right. and development department or those kind of things. Or they've operated in more, across more areas or in, or in different countries. So they have more experience in terms of so when you go interest. there, this right. is the way to okay. do it. These okay. are the lessons yeah. that we have learned. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Rachel, that sounds fantastic. I think that this is a session not to be missed. Thanks for sharing the information with us. Thank you, Nico. Thanks, Thanks for, for the opportunity. That's fantastic. Thanks. So if you hurry on over to the site and you check out this link, you can uh, follow uh, some of the other speakers and perhaps make contact beforehand, ask questions that you need to ask, and uh, be sure to uh, not miss the Innovation Summit. Thanks for watching Cappuccino uh, Conversations. Until another time, goodbye.